So let me get Do you think you'll restore it? Or what do you think you what do you think you'll end up doing with it? Um this car will get restored. Cool. I'm I'll ready. tell you why in a minute. Okay. I'm excited. <laughs> Are you comfortable with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're ready. Right. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So we just got a lead in, it's 8.40 at night. We're gonna land about 12.15, we gotta drive an hour, 1.15 in the morning, we're going to Indianapolis, Indiana, home of the Indy 500. And why would we do that? Well, some of my favorite cars in the world are the pace cars. What's the ultimate pace car? Well, as far as first generation Camaros go, it's gotta be a 1967, because that's the first year. We're gonna go chase an Indianapolis 500 pace car convertible, and the guys that have it, I don't think they know what they have. I'm going to tell them what they have. We'll see what happens. So grab your cup of joe and let's go. All right, so we're at the Indianapolis airport. Another new thing for COVID that we haven't actually experienced yet. There's no rental cars. So we're trying a new app called Turo. And we just got off a flight that was late as usual. 90% of the flights I've been on this year are late. This was not only really super late, no AC, and the vents over the seats didn't work at all. It was brutally hot. Gotta get better from here. So we used a Turo app because there was nothing available from rental cars. Lyft and Uber didn't seem to be an option at all. Guy shows up in an Audi A8 W12 Quattro. This is like a 500 horsepower car. Huh. Wonder if he knows he just rented his car to the X world's fastest guy in the United States from coast to coast. <laughs> now we're heading off to uh, Terre Haute, Indiana to rescue this Camaro. So it's like 1.10 in the morning. We're in Terre Haute, Indiana now after landing at the Indianapolis airport. We're staying at a home too. We'll be here for only about five hours. We'll get up earlier, head out, hopefully rescue the Camaro. Good morning. And that was a nice four hours of sleep. I'm gonna go rescue 67 Camaro convertible and hope that it's a special model that I think it is. We won't know till we get there, till we check out the trim tag. Let's go. So I assume you're Chris because of your shoes. I'm Chris. Grammar <laughs> shoes. Yeah. I'm Chad. I'm Chad. Dennis <laughs> Collins. My little brother's name's Chad. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Got fancy was. shoes on too. Yeah. So do you. Well, I don't, I don't think about that. <laughs> <laughs> Big. All right. Well, there we go. There she is. Very cool. All right. You guys, tell me what you know about the car and what you think it is. So he literally bought it. He said he bought it new from Bedford, Indiana. This is where it came from, and they. Had it in Georgia for a little bit. He drove it around. He got to the point where it just kept on sitting. The brakes got bad on That's it. That's what it said. The brakes went bad and it set for, set I think, since until, 1990. Yeah. How old was the guy that you guys got it from? I have pictures. I'll show probably you. Probably 79, 80. He, 80 years he was old. legally yeah. blind. He got, and he just couldn't drive the car anymore. Okay, so correct me if I'm wrong. You guys are obviously chasing rare stuff. Yeah. Flipping muscle cars. I mean, sure. you see a Mustang Fastback, a Chevelle. Yeah. Very cool. There's actually a Mazda RX-2 over there as well. well. We might have to look at that. Yeah. How far is Bedford from Indianapolis? Uh, from probably about an hour, 12 minutes, somewhere okay. around there, 15 minutes. So it's been parked since the last inspection was 1976. It's been sitting forever. Yeah. So we talked on the phone briefly. You guys sent me a couple of pictures that were enough for me to tell I wanted to come look at it, but weren't really very descriptive. So, 67 was the first year of the 350. I don't know if you guys knew that. Okay. So the 350 was actually released in the 67 Camaro. Okay. So that is a difficult motor to find. Yeah. You'd have an easier time finding a DZ302 out of the Z28 to find in this engine. But from there, obviously, if you walk around the car, you guys told me you think it's an SSRS car. It's got the Hideaway headlights. 
I, I mean, we're sure it's at least an SS, but I just, I wasn't sure if it was, if that was indicating rally sport or not. It, there's nothing in there, Bruce. There's not? No, it's yeah, it's out here. Ooh, nasty. <laughs> Okay, so you guys cleaned up the trend tag a little bit. Yeah. There is a little bit of paperwork on it as well. Let's see what paperwork we got. I don't think it's a, I mean, any significant. Too crazy. Yeah, but it's, it's not. Just, it's just the insurance, insurance cards and all that kind of stuff. You guys got the title? Yeah, we okay. have the title. So the first thing I always look at on these cars is check the VIN. So, yeah. what, what are the last six digits on there? 208018. 208018. You've got, what are the last four, I'm sorry? 8018. So you got 8018 for the last four, and then the body number is 7928. Those rarely ever match. They just need to yeah. be close. Okay. So, which leads me to believe this is the right trim tag and the right bin tag. Nice. A lot of times that stuff's been monkeyed with. So, oh, yeah. that's a pretty good start. A lot of paperwork. Did y'all go through all this? No. <laughs> but the title matches the tag on yes. right there. Looks like it was in Georgia at some time. Yeah. The did he, did owner, he live there as well? Yes, I think they had a house there or yeah, something. I think they have a vacation us. house there or something. But you guys think he owned it since early 70s? This special yeah. guy? I think he said 71, 72, I don't know. I mean, it's neat, it's not a big deal, but it's just cool to see how long somebody's had something. I don't even see the date on that. He had the original jack and he wouldn't give it to us. 95. We told him, I said, I'll buy you a brand new jack today, right now. He, <laughs> said, he was like, I just want to keep something, man. <laughs> so he kept the jack on the truck. Kept the original kept jack. The jack. Okay, that's odd. I yeah. know. So I can see this all just registration. I'm just curious if there's any factory paperwork in here at all. Well, here he goes all the way back to 76, and so we're getting back there. Okay, I don't see any factory paperwork. Like that, I think. Which would be nice like to have, because what's, what's a drag about a Chevrolet, unless it was a Canadian built Chevrolet, you can't get any of the documents. Okay. So you can't, the trim tag will tell you a lot on this car. Yeah. Uh, especially if it looks like it hasn't been off the uh, original renders in there, but they're getting factory documents, you just can't get any more. <clears throat> I mean, do you think there's a possibility that the build sheet is in the car? Uh, doubtful. Because I was reading where. If they, it could be on top of the gas tank. Okay. Corvettes were in '67. Digital radio, white with bright blue interior. It never hasn't been a total repaint. Jack decals here. Cocktail shakers are in the back. Those are expensive. That's what he <laughs> saw that yesterday. They're real like, expensive. Holy so, crap. I don't know if you guys probably know what these are for, but these are for weight distribution in a convertible. Okay. So they, they added weight in the back so the car wouldn't twist as much. Okay. And then also that you had these in here. And the door jams or extra different striker plates right here yeah so when the car twisted that was your that was your catch so the door wouldn't pop open wow. that was convertible only the 
get attached. <laughs> <laughs> All right, can I see the title? Yeah. So of 200 and something thousand, like 25 were convertible. How many convertibles do you think were SS? Or do you know? I mean... I actually know how many of this exact car there was. I knew you were going to tell me no. That's what I, that's what I want to know the most. It's got to be pretty rare. Got to be. It is pretty rare. Cool. So I normally don't... Uh, I didn't beat you up hard on the phone, but this car no. is expensive. Yeah, I know. So man. they, this is a neat option car in that it's an SSRS, a four-speed convertible. Uh, but the amount of money I'm paying you for it is the top end, yep. maybe beyond for just an SSRS convertible needing restoration. But it's a great color combination. We'll check the trim tag codes here in a second. Uh, but I'm going to agree. I'm going to pay you what we agreed to on the phone. Cool. I'm, I'm not going to come here and grind you on that. Cool. So let me get do you pay. think you'll restore it, or what do you think? You, what do you think you'll end up doing with it? Um, this car will get restored. Cool. I'm I'll tell you why in a minute. Okay. I'm excited. Are you comfortable with that? Yeah, yeah. I, I, we're ready. ready. All right, all right. All right. So I paid you guys in full. Didn't grind you on the price, but you said you needed four T-shirts. Yes, sir. Two large and two XL. Sounds Perfect. good. All right. So Appreciate now I'm going to tell you why I'm actually here. Okay. Let's hear. All right. It. So, white, bright blue interior on a 67 Camaro convertible should absolutely just bells and whistles go off in your head. What's the most famous thing that happens in Indiana? Indy, the Indy 500? Correct. What's the most famous car in 1967 that was at the Indy 500? Was that a pace car? Yes. Yeah. Holy sh**. So, there's different levels of pace cars. Before you guys have a heart attack and think yep. I stole your car, I didn't. However, this is a pace car. But there's three levels of pace cars. I'm going to show you how to tell that because you guys had in this area is the highest concentration of pace cars. Yes. I believe that you could find one or two more of these and hopefully sell them to me yep. again. So let's look under the hood and I'll show you why. But just right off the bat, having white, bright blue, deluxe interior. interior. Yeah, yeah, we know that. And we, that's one thing that we were like freaking out about. Well, the Holy Grail pace car off the bat is going to be a 396. Yes. Okay, this is a 350. Yes. Now, you could, there were actually pace cars. I actually rode in one in 2016 that was a base car. It was a 350 call and shift automatic, zero options. So this car at least has options. You yes. got, it's got a four speed in it, it's got a console, it's got deluxe belts, and it is SS and it is RS. So let's look under the hood and what is the telltale sign, which is really nice on, on the pace cars. Again, you guys don't have paperwork. So proving a Chevrolet is a drag because it can just kill the car. Sure. On the trim tag of a pace car, you can actually prove it. Really? Okay. So Damn. on the next one you guys find, which this is what I hope you see. See where it says C1? Yes. You need to find one that says zero 01. Okay. Okay, so the zero 01 cars are the cars that were actually there at the race mm -hmm. or were a festival car. And this is there. this is this is what's called a replica. Okay. Now I disagree with them calling it that. It's because the guys that have got the actual pace cars and the festival cars try to poo-poo this car and make, sure, make it not as valuable. Mm -hmm. So, but also the cars that were actually festival cars that ran at the festival or at the race, they were gonna have an O3B code. Okay. This is an O4B code. So O3 is January, February, March. Those cars are ready and after track for the race in May. The O4B cars were April before the race were being produced to be distributed out to the dealers that really wanted to have one at their showroom. Okay, so technically this car was not at the race, but yeah. it is a pace car. Yeah, that's cool stuff. Yeah. So, and then as, as you read down on this tag, C1, which is the color, it, that is white paint, white top, mm -hmm. which is all the pace cars were. Then you've got 4P, which means SS350. That's all that can yeah. mean, yeah. which is really I, cool. So, it, that's how they know that's SS350. Yeah, so you know this is SS350 yeah. car. But then also you get down and look at, at the, uh, you, you, your codes are here for the Z22 and Z23 SSRS and Deluxe Interior. So, and then the 12667 denotes a convertible with Deluxe Interior. Oh, if it was a 612647, mm -hmm. it wouldn't have Deluxe Interior. Okay. So, pretty cool. Oh, SS350 yeah. sure. four speed pace car convertible. That's good stuff. Um, but it needs everything. Yeah. <laughs> it needs to be restored. But it's worth it. Uh, in my opinion, yes. Very, very cool. Great find. I appreciate it, you guys. Yeah. 
And no I, I calculated what y'all made on it. And I don't ever count anybody's money. But if you guys could do this every day, y'all are going to make $1,645,000 this year. So nice. congratulations on that. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> so y'all did well. Yeah. Um, our truck is up in the Northeast. Okay. Pick it up now. Okay. So Sean, you guys see him on the show. We'll be here the next couple of days to pick stuff up. Okay. You got anything else for sale? No, not uh, we. We just sold all of our other Camaros that we had. We where did the, uh, the fast bag go to? We. Uh, I actually don't know where it's going through. The guy sent a deposit on it. It's going to be coming up. We have a '67 Camaro coming, but it's. I mean, it is. Yeah, it we is have other. A uh, one of ten, like it's terrible. Three Corvettes. But we buy a lot of '53 to '67 Corvettes. We don't have any of those. Buy a lot of any '65 to '70 fastbacks. What did What did this sell for? Sold it for seventy nine hundred. Okay, I would have bought that. <laughs> and it needs four. Ma'am, we 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 had like four of these not three oh, weeks ago. Yeah, we, we joke have... about calling you, but now I'm really going to start calling you for real. So how fast did I answer you back? I mean, ten minutes. That's what <laughs> I said. Ten minutes. My phone, Plano, Texas. I was like, holy. Yeah, no, I, I answer back quick. Yeah, we're we're always chasing really cool stuff. Well, that's a good find, you guys. Cool for car. Sure. Very you, cool you, car. I think you should check out that Mazda. Let's go see. We got we got black and white pictures, documents where it's been raced. Since the 80s, it was a team Mazda race car. Like he paid sponsorship to Mazda. We have all the documents. Fully documented. But in the states, these cars sell for 30 grand. But in Australia, that's a hundred thousand dollar car. <laughs> yeah, they're tough to buy. And I, I chase the Japanese stuff and the sports cars as well. This uh, we this color. Well, is, you get a list. Yeah. I'm sure we can. Just send me an email. If it's cool, I'll call, him, call you quick. Okay. Yeah. If it's not, I'll scan by it or I'll say thanks for your time, not me. There's a Viper truck in here, too. It'll be interesting to see where that car is delivered new. <laughs> That's the only document you can actually get from Chevrolet now. It's called an NCR shipping report. Yeah. It'll tell you what dealer you got it new. But other than that, without the trim tag on there, you're hard to know. Yeah, you're well, tough to tell. Bird trooping off. True rotary car. Wow. EU green. It's the, it's the, the my favorite color, not the rares. And it's, it's been repainted. It, it's not as vibrant as. But like I said, in Australia, these guys will trade their kids for these. Where did y'all find this car locally? Yep. Yeah, man. That's crazy rare. Thanks, Dad. You're giving away your gold rings. <laughs> I think I have the black and white pictures in my room. But there's a picture from back in the day. I mean, he's got so many, so many documents. And this is going to Australia. Yes. What did this sell for? Uh, thirty. And we wanted more. Yeah. But I have black and white pictures as well. I mean, it's matches your shoes. I know that's right. So, what's the most expensive pair of shoes you have? Uh, I have a few. I've had a few really expensive ones, but I've got a few thousand dollar shoes. Like I got the electronic lacing Jordan 11s. <laughs> I have the, the first electronic Jordans to ever come out. Some Travis Scotts, some off whites. Some he's got a bunch of off whites as well. Wow. I kind of understand the shoe game. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's it crazy. I mean, I don't. We don't buy and resell shoes, but we just collab on them. Yeah, we, we know some people are interested in that market. All right, well, I appreciate you guys' time. Yes, sir. We're going to, this is a quick 24-hour turnaround for us. And well, we appreciate you coming out. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Call me yeah. out some more stuff. Okay. Awesome. Yep. Thank Great you. find. Yes, sir. All right, Chad, we forgot to ask, what's your favorite local place to eat? It's a little early it's in the morning, but breakfast or lunch or brunch? Probably brunch, probably Moggers. How do you spell that? M-O-G-G-E-R-S. Okay. How far is that? It's uh, go down, fruit ribs down, fruit ribs turn right on Poplar, and you'll see it on the right hand side of the Mogger's Brewery, right across from CVS Pharmacy. I think they're open at this time? For sure. For sure? Yeah. No, well, they open guys, at 11. If you guys want to go eat with us, I'm buying. It's up to you. Yeah. You want to do that? Yeah. yeah. Nobody turns down free food and beer. I know, that's right. <laughs> I know, that's right. All right, well, we will uh, follow you guys there or meet you there. Okay, I, I got to load up my kid. Okay. Hey. We'll meet you in the parking lot of Bob.
So, so we're at Moggers, the famous pub in town in Terre Haute. Is that where we're at? Yes, Terre Haute. All right. We're Chad and Chris. We just bought the Pace Doctor Verbal from. And the specialty is fried tenderloin. Look at that. <laughs> Get you some of that. Beautiful. It's good to. Well, how many did you say of those cars were built? Uh, more than stop from you? You really want to know? Yeah. Okay. So the 01 cars are the ones that are really sought after. They're called the brass hat car. There are 40 of them. Okay. And then the replica pace car, which I don't like that term because I believe it is it is a pace car convertible. They made 100. Wow. One of 100. One of 100. So here's the one of 100. One of 100. Cheers. All right. Thank you guys for your time. Cheers. Cheers. Tenderloin, unbelievable. Chad, you got a beautiful family, sir. Thank you. Chris, thanks for your time. Yes, sir. Appreciate All right, y'all have a great day. You too, man. Now we're off to the airport. Okay, we're back at the airport in Indianapolis. We did rescue a killer one of 100 1967 Camaro pace car. Get you some of that. It was a great day to be alive. Please like, tag, share, and follow. And make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Have a great day.